Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Yes, the 540 was dyno tested again. Finally got to make it happen. This time we were testing oil pan and an oil pump, which we'll get to in a minute. But before we do that, I probably ought to run down the combination because several people are going to ask. This is a 540 big block Chevy. It has a Merlin 4 cast iron aftermarket blocks, a nice piece, SCAT 4340 forged crankshaft, SCAT 4340 H-beam rods with the ARP 2000 cap screws. It has Molly dome pistons that are forged, but they have been modified, and here's what I mean. Uh, initially, they had a 39cc dome. They've been milled off to get to a much smaller one. I think it's like a 23 now. They have lateral gas ports that were added. I'm using some Total Seal gapless rings, and thanks for Total Seals for supplying those. Those are amazing. They work great. And the heads that are on top are a set of Promax 317 rectangular port heads. They have been modified. Here's what's been done to those. They were milled to 110 cc's, uh, and also they have a 2300-188 exhaust valve. They have a 50-degree intake valve job, just a regular 45 on exhaust. The reason for that, well, you'd have to go back and watch a previous video where I was doing dyno tests with a 496, and these were the heads that were used. And the flow on them, they dropped dramatically at the lower lift range, but it did pick up peak flow. And before some of you are instantly commenting that that cost power, it did not on the 496. And now we're on a 540 and just reused the same heads, and they're working great. The camshaft on this is a... 275 intake duration, 288 on exhaust, 112 lobe separation, 820 lift on intake, and 808 on exhaust. Standard firing order. Uh, the intake is you can't; it's not available anymore. This is a Brodix. I think it's HV 2002 or 20, yeah, something like that. It's this special one that's got a turtle. It's actually a um, 4150 style, but we're using the HVH 4500 to 4150 spacer and. 1050 sportsman dominator up top but that's that's the engine combination now let's talk about the stuff that was tested the first piece that was changed is i went from a moroso regular high volume spur gear oil pump to this one this is a titan engineering gear rotor oil pump i love the things now this one was set up i think it's got barely above um, stock volume as far as pump pressure uh, volume now it might be a little bit more but it's not standard i can tell you that's just slightly above it the oil pressure i had them set it up at 80 psi from the factory you can actually have them set it up however you want you can have them set up at 55 or whatever there's actually an adjustable uh, set screw on the side if you want to change it yourself um, great pump but its biggest thing is the design of the gear so regular pumps oil pumps that you get have a spur gear and you can see from what they're showing right here that um, it creates more cavitation. And I actually found this, oddly enough, on Instagram Reels showing the actual cavitation happening in progress. This is one of the major limiting factors for the spur give pump. But I love the Titan one because here's something else about the Titan pumps. I can tell you this from firsthand experience. If you have one and you have it in your engine, you can literally take the intermediate shaft and turn the pump by hand and you'll see it building pressure in the line. On a spur gear pump, I it's very, very, very hard to do it if you can even do it. So love the pump. It's got a built-in oil screen so you don't have to press one on and don't have to worry about it breaking it off. It's a big, massive piece, but it is fairly, it's, an, it's a nice deal. This was the other piece that was used. This is a Moroso oil pan. Now this one's very, very unique and does a lot of things differently. First off, as you could, it's hard to tell, but there's a kick out on each side and those kick outs help with windage. It's also got partitions that run down the center to keep it um, also to help with windage and also you've got your windage tray. Now this particular pan is insanely expensive and so is the pump, but after all, they're worth some power. But I use them on my drag car, I have an 80 Camaro, uses the same pump, same pan configuration, but it, it could do a bunch of other stuff too. However, this one, the reason why you're gonna be kind of disappointed when I tell you this test is we never changed and put the hamburger pan back on just to see how much the pump was worth versus how much just the pan was worth. And I can already feel your disappointment, but let me tell you why. Usually this pan bolts right in. Um, it's still kind of a pain in the rear, but 
This one, for whatever reason, was worse. So I had Gary Dunsworth put it on so we could just mock it up before I got on the dyno and waste all the time on the dyno trying to get the pan to fit. Well, for whatever reason, this one would not clear the pump and also did not really line up on the bolt holes for the block. So it's almost like when they put the pan rails in their jig that were off a little bit and it caused everything to be off. So he had to do some massaging on the pan itself towards the rear, not the windage tray part, but there's a part that comes up that keeps oil from splashing back up. He had to clearance that a little bit to get it to clear and also had a really fight with the bolt holes because um, as he was putting the bolts in, it was trying to thread into the pan rail. So ho hopefully you guys know what I mean. Point is it was shifted over too much. And you might want, well, just pop it off. These are in uh, pain in the rear because essentially what you have to do is you have to have the pan up um, upside down and you're lifting up to put the bolt in. And if you happen to drop it, you got to take the whole pan off and start over again. It sucks. They're very difficult to put on. So the plan had been, what we're going to do is we're going to dyno with the hamburger pan and the oil pump, the Titan oil pump, and then we're going to switch to this one. But he had spent three hours putting this pan on. So I didn't feel like saying, hey, let's take it off to put the hamburger one on. So we just ran with this as it was. Maybe in future dyno sessions, we're going to switch and just do the hamburger pan to see. But I'll say this, it's very, very hard once you see the dyno results, um, it's very hard to go from making all that power and knowing you're going to lose power putting the other pan on. So it's, it'd be, we probably should just for testing purposes, but it's hard to go backwards in, as far as power just to kind of prove something. But um, yes, in case you're wondering about the hamburger pan that I'm referring to, it's their common one they sell for big blocks. It actually has a windage tray and a crank scraper. So you would think it would do great, but this Pan pump combination does fantastic. Here are the results so you can see what I'm talking about. Here are the results and it's it's pretty incredible. So this black line right here is with the old hamburger oil pump and the Moroso high volume oil pump. Spur gear, normal stuff, right? So I made 842. This Titan oil pump and the Moroso billet aluminum pan made 872.5 horsepower. That's a gain of 30 horsepower. Now, both of these were done with six quarts of oil, which I'll show you in a sec because we're going to try different um, levels of oil in the Moroso one. You'll see what it does. Torque went up only about eight foot-pounds of torque, but that was right here. If you look at this range here, definitely it's gaining more than eight. It's, it's in the 20 as well, but for peaks, it only gained eight foot-pounds of torque. So, I mean, that's a huge gain. There's, there's just no doubt about it. It's, it's a big gain. So, but for those who want to see the actual raw numbers, let me show you real quick. This is it. It made, there you can see it, 872 at 7,100 RPMs and 700, and you can call it 717 between 58 and 59. So really, I mean, it's a good motor, obviously, but uh, that's right. And ignore the air fuel ratio. The air hat's not hooked up and that's, this is calculated. By the way, if you like these results, so you like looking at this stuff and this is something you want to see. I'm gonna have a whole book made and I make books like this. So for instance, this is from the 540 from the first dyno session that was done with it that actually had that one on it. So I make books like these and I sell them. There'll be a link in the description. You can buy them. I'm gonna have a pre-order for this book. So the entire 540 dyno session number two and the 496 dyno session that I haven't even done videos for and it'll be a while down the road. That's all gonna be in one printed book and that's gonna cost probably 50 bucks and I'm gonna have it for a pre-order right now, and I'm only gonna print 10 more than I have for a pre-order. And obviously they'll be available in a PDF after that as well, but for those that can't, don't live in the United States or just would rather have a uh, you know, digital version, that's fine too. Uh, though sometimes they're a little bit, they are a little bit cheaper, but anyway, point being is, it won't be just the, what you're seeing here. It'll have everything that was done with the 540 dyno session, because this is only one video about the 540, so there's other stuff that was tested as well. So. You'll get to see that in future videos, but they'll all be in a printout version for those that are who'd rather have a book to actually look at and reference later instead of trying to find the video and trying to where the, find in the video where the dyno numbers are. But anyway, there's that. So those are the two things, but I wanna show you something else too. So besides that, what you're gonna get is, what you see is, get the pages real quick. No, not that, that one yet. Of course I had to skip the wrong one. Excuse me for this, I don't wanna do another take. Here we go. This. This is where things get interesting. So 
keep in mind this, this is the oil pressure flow results, but I wanna pull up the book here and show you this. So this is 540 dyno session number one, but I wanna show you this because in the book, I printed the oil pressures from before. So this was with the hamburger oil pump, or hamburger oil pan, the Morosa oil pump. And if you look here, um, this black line that you see here is with seven quarts of oil. And, uh, sorry, six quarts of oil. This black line up here is six quarts of oil. And if you notice, it starts dripping down at the higher RPM. So it get about 89 and then would drop. And you would think, well, it's because it's low in oil. But when you add in one more quart of oil, so this was seven quarts, it, it's oil pressure 65. And it kind of didn't drop off as much, but it never got as high. And it would go to about 59. This was from last session with that hamburger oil pump. Uh, hamburger oil pan and Morosa oil pump. So point is at seven quarts, it was absolutely horrible for pressure. It also killed a ton of power. But at six quarts, it did this, right? So the reason why we had tested on this with six quarts of oil, going back to this chart, is because that was the best for the hamburger oil pan. So in order to keep the test somewhat equal, we tested with six quarts on the Moroso pan now. And that's why you have this. But out of curiosity, we started, what, what we did, we started adding a half a quart at a time. So it had six, and by the way, the pan even says, it says six quarts recommended. I added half a quart more, and uh, the power really didn't change. It actually came up about one. And then another had another half a quart, and it actually fixed some of the oil pressure problems, because at six quarts of oil with the Moroso pan, it was doing something similar to this. So this isn't, I mean, it it's, it's not great to have it drop like this, but when it was doing like this, it was because it had too much oil, which seems weird. Um, so what we were trying to do is see if we add another quart of oil or half a quart of oil and then another half a quart, if we would get rid of this drop off at the higher RPMs and would power remain the same. So what ended up happening is we ended up adding seven quarts. So one more quart than even this chart shows here to see if we could fix this oil pressure problem. And that's what I'm gonna show you right now. That's what I was trying to get to. That's this. So with the Titan pump and the Moroso pan, this is with seven quarts of oil. We now have, a, it just climbs the whole way. This little bump right here might be it's trying to get some of its pressure relief spring because the pump itself set up at 80 PSI. Um, obviously we're way over that. So at 99.2, and that's with seven quarts. This line that you see down here, this is when we had the hamburger, that's this line here. This is the hamburger pan trying to handle seven quarts of oil. So both of these pressures are at the same amount of oil in the pan. And as you can tell, that Moroso sure enjoys it. And by the way, again, the Moroso recommends six quarts, not seven. But for this, in this instance, seven was working it. And by the way, it even picked up another two horsepower adding that one other quart. So there's something to be said for that. And just out of curiosity, I'll show you this. Now this isn't a direct comparison, but it gives you an idea what I mean by power-wise. Um, this red line you see here, this is when we switched intakes, but that's seven quarts of oil. That's seven quarts of oil. Um, it's a huge difference. Now not all of it's from oil, some of it's from the intake, but you could tell there's a massive difference when it comes to the um, seven quarts of oil. But again, it's not direct comparison because we also switched intakes, which that's another video. Yeah, it does make over 900 now. But point I'm trying to make with you guys is, the biggest thing is the pan and the pump, and I wish I could tell you which one, makes a lot of power. Together, they really work well. It definitely, this is the type of oil pressure you want. And having, fixing this where it doesn't drop off like you see here, it's worth a few horsepower because it did gain about two horsepower just doing that, which you wouldn't think because it wasn't like it was starved. Even when it was dropping, it still had 75 pounds of oil pressure, but keeping a nice consistent one, yeah, it made more power. So anyway, there's the results. Guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I'm no Superman. I do not port cast iron heads. You guys take care.